All right, as promised, here's the video on that worksheet we were starting in class. So, our prompt here says, suppose a student takes a quiz that consists of four multiple choice questions. Each question has five options. Unfortunately, the student has not reviewed and has to guess on each question. Let x equal the number of questions the student guesses correctly. Well, we know what our x is, the number of questions the student guesses correctly. So if we're going to create a probability distribution, we know the first thing we need to do is determine what those possibilities are. And obviously, the student can get no questions correct, right? Really sad time. There are only four multiple choice questions on the exam, so they could also get one right, two right, three right, and then four right. This would obviously be the best case scenario. They just randomly guessed and happened to get all four correct. So can't get five correct because we only have four questions. So now that we have our X's, we can go ahead and make our distribution. Now normally, I like to put the X's um, horizontally. This time I'm going to do the X's, I just said I didn't need to erase that vertically, and I'll show you why. So I'll put X's, and then beside my X's, I'm going to have my probabilities. I guess I'll leave some of that for now. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Are there possible answers or number of questions they get right? Now, for each of these, in order for, to get any of these number of things correct, we're dealing with a sampling question, essentially, because there are four multiple choice questions, each of which is its own event, right? We could even set this up with our tree diagram and say, okay, first question, they could get it right or wrong. Second question could be right or wrong. Third question, so this is just like our reboot, no reboot question from class. Right, we have our sampling issue where we can either have right or wrong each time. And maybe I even should have kept that there for a second. So let's go back to that first question. They can get the question right or wrong. Well, what's the probability to get the question right? This is where, looking for colors, this is where the five options comes into play and matters. Because with five options, well, there's a one out of five chance that you get the question right, and then there's a four out of five chance that you get the question wrong, right? Always summing up to one. And so for every branch in this tree, oops, for every branch in this tree, that's going to remain the same. These should be independent because how they do on one question doesn't affect the next. So this is essentially a sampling with replacement question, just like the reboot question. The one we did in class. So that means some of these are going to be easy to do. Zero questions right and four questions right. We only have four questions, so each question is its own random event. To get zero questions right, that means every single question the student got wrong. To get four questions right, every single question they got right. And we know those probabilities. Right, to get them all wrong, well, that was one out of, oh, four out of five, sorry, 0. 0.8. So four out of five for each of these things. So all wrong is 0. 0.8 to the fourth power. Whereas all right, well, that's a one out of five chance, right? So that's going to be 0. 0.2 to the fourth power. And we can keep going. So the next easiest ones to do is going to be the one, the exactly one question we've tackled a bunch in class. So they still have four questions. In this case, they have to get the first question right, and the next three will then need to be wrong. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been exactly one. Now, just like with the reboot question and the question with the, I guess, the marbles, we did one before that as well. I can't remember what the context was, but all of those questions, this is not the only way that could happen. If I actually did the whole tree, this could be reboot, or I mean, sorry, right, wrong, 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 right, wrong, wrong, right? I could get, they could have gotten the question right first, second, third, or even fourth. So there are four ways that this can happen. So we have to do a big four out in front.
And then we can throw in the probabilities. The 0.2, the 0.8, the 0.8, and the 0.8. So this is 4 times 0.2 times 0.8 to the third. I don't really like that, how that looks. I'm just going to do this. All right. Now, 2 is a little bit more difficult, right? The slot part um, and figuring out what the these sort of look like is not bad. 2 right means the other two must be wrong. Right, so this part is, is simple. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. The issue here is how can I get this? How many ways can I do that? And that's going to take a little bit more thinking. So I'm going to put just a question mark here for now and we'll come back. And let's skip to the 3 right. Because 3 right is very similar to getting 1 right. Because in order to get 3 right, 1 has to be wrong. So how many ways can we do that? still four because that wrong one could be first, second, third, fourth. So um, it's going to look very similar to our exactly one except for we're going to reverse the probabilities here. So our final answer is going to be four times 0.2 to the third, 0.8. And so now the last piece, we got to figure out this how many ways. So one way you could do this, you could actually just write it down and then start rewriting it. So well, we could do just leave those two right ones together and uh, obviously they don't have to be right next to each other we could have something like this and then last one so the thing that's hard about this is you have to determine did I finish is this all of the ways uh, turns out six is the right number but that's, that's probably the hardest part, is going, did I get all of the different ways to do this? So the goal of this, once you find all these probabilities, why I did this worksheet, is to get you to see this pattern, right? In each of these things, we have 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and you can see we're going from a fourth power to a third power to a second power to a first power. And if we really want to, we could even think of this as 0.8 to the zero power, which is just one. So we can see those descending values of the 0.8s. And then the opposite direction, we have the 0.2s, fourth power, third power, second power, first power, and that invisible zeroth power on the top. So we can see sort of a pattern emerging. And this is where the binomial distribution comes from, is that in any of these settings, where we're dealing with this yes or no, either right or wrong type situation for multiple different trials, our four questions, and we're counting up how many of those trials are successful, or in this case, getting a question right, we can actually use something called the binomial distribution and save ourselves all of this headache and work. So that's where we're going in uh, part five, is we're gonna start learning about this binomial distribution, and that's what our worksheet's gonna be on on Tuesday.